Hello, welcome, and happy holidays? Okay, it's not quite the holidays yet, but we still do have a lot to celebrate this zombie apocalypse. With Namalsk on the horizon and the introduction of the 1.10 patch, many PC servers have begun running the modded Winter Chernaris map. Despite how absolutely breathtaking and atmospheric this mod has become, many players are finding it difficult to survive the cold, harsh conditions. This guide will give you some tips on how to survive the elements on both Winter Chernaris and Namalsk. If you find this guide helpful, do me a favor and please subscribe, and check out my other guide videos by clicking the card in the top right. Alright, let's get started. When you spawn in on a winter map, you're basically living on borrowed time. But let's face it, who isn't in Daisy? The freezing temperatures make that clock tick a hell of a lot faster than it normally would. Lower temperatures not only put your fresh spawn character at risk for hypothermia, but also increases the amount of calories you need to consume to stay alive. So you are both freezing and quickly starving to death from the get-go. Right away, you're going to need to gather supplies to make a fire. Now, I'm not going to go too deep into crafting as I've already covered it in other guides, but a knife is really all that you need. However, you can also make a fire with an axe or hatchet to gather the lumber and kindling, and a matchbox lighter or flare in order to get the fire going. You're going to want to hold on to these supplies throughout your entire character's life, because you're going to be building a fire in almost every town that you visit. In order to stay warm in Winter Cherno or Namalsk, you're going to basically need to leapfrog from town to town. Build a fire and warm up till you get the heat buff plus symbol, loot the town, regain the heat buff, and then use it to cross the cold wilderness in between towns. Repeat as necessary. This might sound tedious, but if you prepare by holding on to the equipment like the axe and the matches, it isn't going to slow you down all that much. As you loot each town, look for warmer clothing by checking the insulation values. Ushanka hats, balaclavas, pea coats, hunting gear, and some military gear provide the best insulation values and will keep you warm as you travel. However, from what I've played of this mod, no amount of warm clothing is ever enough to keep you completely warm while out in the elements for an extended period of time. You're always going to have that light blue indicator unless you're indoors or nearby a fire. A few more tips for staying warm. Wet clothes reduce the insulation values of your clothing. You can dry your wet clothes much quicker by wringing them out or by placing them on the floor in front of a fire. Make sure that you check every article of clothing and all of the items in your inventory that can get wet, like rags or bandages. These again are going to make you colder. Much like wet clothing, damaged clothing can significantly decrease the insulation values. So consider carrying duct tape, a sewing kit, or even a second set of clothes in case the main set gets damaged from zombie attacks or gunshots. Damaged clothing insulation values are reflected in the inventory screen. So if you see a pea coat that says low insulation, that's just because it's damaged. Finding shelter indoors is one way to protect yourself from the cold winds if you don't have a fire. So jumping from building to building while looting a town will help keep you warm. One way to protect yourself from cold winds while leapfrogging from town to town is to travel through the woods. The trees are going to help protect you from the cold winds and keep you a little bit warmer. It is also much colder at night and at higher elevations, so keep that in mind when deciding when and where to travel. Last tip has to do with heat packs. Heat packs aren't the most effective way to stay warm, but they do help. However, they don't really last very long, so I'd advise you to hold on to them and only use them for firefights. It's a good way to prevent yourself from shivering while you're aiming and trying to get those Christmas kills. All right, let's talk about my favorite thing in DayZ. Fashion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> One thing I like the most about these winter maps is that clothing that used to seem useless, like winter hunting clothes, are now highly sought after. You're going to see a lot of people in winter Cherno and Namalsk wearing full white outfits and even winter ghillie suits. But is white really the best way to camouflage in the snow? Most of us are used to hiding in trees and bushes in order to blend in with the environment and provide some cover. But if you're wearing all white, that isn't really a viable option even on these winter maps. You're going to have to adjust your playstyle to the map that you're on and the clothing that you've got. If you're wearing all white, hiding in a pine tree is going to make you stand out like a sore thumb. You're much better off laying prone in the snow in order to blend in under these circumstances. On the other hand, if you're wearing darker colors, you stand out while against the white snowy backdrop. 
but you blend in really well with these pine trees. It's really up to you and how you like to play for whatever's gonna work best. Honestly, I think you're still better off wearing dark clothes. When you're crossing an open field, you stand out no matter what, whether you're wearing black or white. You blend in a little better with white, but the fact that you're moving is going to attract people's attention anyways. I'd prefer to have the option to utilize a bit of cover from trees, rather than pray that no one spots me while laying in the middle of an open snowy field. But again, it's up to personal preference. Additionally, dark colors are less noticeable while peeking from the windows of a building, as most building interiors are pretty dark. Again, just keep in mind what you're wearing and how it contrasts with the items behind you if you don't want to get spotted. Earlier I mentioned that being cold increases your character's metabolism, meaning that you're going to have to eat more often in order to survive. Because of that, hunting and fishing are key to survival. Killing and butchering deer, elk, goats, sheep, cows, chickens, or even bears is much more sustainable than relying on canned food. Boiling or baking meat and fat further increases the amount of calories you get from each piece, as indicated on this guide courtesy of Asmondian on Twitter. If you have a gun or any means to kill an animal, you'd be a fool not to hunt and butcher it on a winter mat. It could be the difference between your character thriving and surviving, or dying on the coast. All right, let's talk a little bit about Namalsk. Namalsk was developed for the Arma 2 DayZ mod by Sumrak, who happens to be the lead DayZ developer nowadays. He also streams on Twitch at Namal Survivor if you want to check him out there. He has been working on bringing Namal to Daisy Standalone on PC for quite some time now, and recently announced that it will be released on December 3rd. I for one cannot wait to check out this new map that is going to include custom survival mods. We really don't know all that much about what changes will be made to Daisy's medical system and survival systems for this mod. One thing we do know is that Sumerak decided to wait until the 1.10 patch to release the mod, because he wanted the vanilla game to have more cold survival challenges. Things like clothing insulation values, wind chill, day-night temperature cycles, elevation, newly added heat buffer, changes to the common cold, influenza, and hypothermia, the reintroduction of heat dissipation on cooked meat, rotting meat, and environmental effects to campfires. All of these survival elements added to the vanilla game seem to be a part of Sumrak's vision for Namalsk. So what can we expect? Uh, likely, we can expect even more challenges than the ones we're facing in Winter Shinaras, all the stuff that we've been talking about today. One tidbit picked up from Sumrak's Twitter shows a character ice fishing with a pickaxe laying next to him. It may seem like a minor thing, but it appears that on Namalsk, you're going to need more than just a knife and a hook in order to do some fishing. You're going to need to break through the ice to reach the water itself. We'll know more next week, and I'll definitely be doing some survival guides specific to the Namalsk mod, and some loot root guides to help you figure out where you spawned, where to go to find food and water, and then where you can go from there to find the best loot in the game. Till then, have fun practicing your winter survival skills on the Winter Trenaris map. Two servers I really like for this mod is the Day 1 Winter Trenaris and the Zero Winter Trenaris servers. Both of these servers are PC only, uh, sorry console people, but there are no mods on either console at the moment, uh, which means that both of these winter maps aren't going to be available. It's crap, I know. From what I hear, it has more to do with Sony and Microsoft blocking things than anything else, but uh, I really don't know. Anyways, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful, and if you did, please subscribe and come on over to Twitch for some live streams. Later, everybody.